When it came down to me trying to be as consistent as I can on social media, I had a lot of resistance and I feel like a lot of it was based on the massage noir and all of the cultural ideologies that I adopted when I was younger and things that kind of aided to my insecurities growing up and it kept me from showing up consistently to a point where I didn't want to create if I didn't look a certain way. I couldn't do anything unless I was able to fit this standard and at the end of the day when you are trying to show up as consistently as you can you have to be able to show up in your most authentic way and i feel like maybe if i just say it if i just let it out and if i just express myself and release it to this void that i can actually let it go and it not hold me back anymore from this journey that i'm trying to take being a creator on this platform i advise you to watch this video hear my story and maybe after you strip away the layers of insecurities or things that may be holding you back from showing up consistently on social media if that's something that you want to do or consistent anywhere in your life because it doesn't have to be on this medium that you choose to express yourself it's in any way that you choose to show up in your life and uh yeah hope you enjoy to the black girl who hides herself Often in our day to day, we enter spaces where we have to dilute our essence to become accepted. Women of color across the world are told to straighten our kinks, to brighten our eyes, to mold our bodies, to shape our character into the box designed by the hands of our oppressors. And for survival, the women before us have created this culture that what on the surface looks like self-hate is really an effort to be left alone and not be looked at as a target for bullying or being othered. We have so thoroughly been stripped of our souls through the act of genocide on black bodies that the journey of our awakening and our soul's consciousness has to be cleansed and pulled at the deepest roots to heal our ancestors' pain, to continue to reach higher heights and fonder loves like the divine intended for us to. I think God designed us with the love dust of the earth so that we could one day give that love back to her when the time comes. And in order to exist in the frequency of the love powerful enough to heal our mother earth, we must become that within ourselves. So. To the black girl who hides herself, I write this letter to extend my heart and to use the light of my awareness to shine on you so that the depths of your soul can feel the warmth of my unconditional love in your most raw form. I want you to know that you are beauty, wisdom, grace, and love. I think growing up in the South and experiencing entertainment in black culture without it being filtered in the 90s and early 2000s was like a pretty cool childhood to have because there was just this raw culture that felt fresh and the entertainment industry displayed this black luxury that I think was so inspiring but it was also like the height of massage noir like our music was the heart of our culture where all of that kind of existed um, there was like this collective sound that unified us. It made most black households kindred because we were all digesting the same things. So as a young girl, I saw every type of woman. And in music videos, there was this unspoken desirability of Eurocentrics features that you just pick up on after a while. And in schools, it existed there 100% because we just wanted to be like the culture. And I grew up in the South where our essence of blackness was cool, but the features of something outside of blackness was like always loved and admired. And yeah, that was a real thing. I remember being younger and having my first ever boyfriend and it's light and it's unserious, of course, and super normal. 
I remember being over at a friend's house and this girl, she was cool, she was great, you know, she did have more Eurocentric features than I did and she was liked by, you know, boys and I remember waking up at her house and seeing my boyfriend texting her claiming that he was only close to me to get to her or get to be recognized by her and all of the other girls knew about it but me and I was like distraught like of course those girls were not my friends and I think I can get over that but it was discovering for the first time where I fell on the undesirability scale to a black boy that had the same features as me it set the tone for a lot of damaging self-image ideologies and the lengths that I went through after that to hide parts of myself no matter where I was, I was constantly being bombarded with the standard and being told, you're not valuable if you're not this. It's sick, okay? And because we can't help how we were born, and as black women, we're raised into this psychological warfare that we don't even know is happening. And because of the lack of awareness, we conform this is a reminder for us that like when we forget who we are all chaos breaks loose sorry i had to say that so i wore weaves i loved my partial sew-in it was layered it was cute there was one point where i even had color contacts from the beauty supply store i was just like out here fucking up my eyes and i that didn't last long because it was very uncomfortable for me and I think I did that behind my mom's back or something. I don't know. Whatever. I did it in like the ninth grade. And I loved the way I looked. I didn't have to figure out my hair every single day. I didn't have to face the daily challenge of being an ethnic black woman every single day. There were parts of me I did not love. And I didn't even want to look at. And instead of living in a world where black women were loved for just who we are. I claimed the disdain for the parts of myself I could not change and the world just agreed with me and encouraged my efforts to shrink myself and change myself. Matter of fact, they created the products with that idea in mind. This was the norm as a young woman. So what I want to say in college is when my self-love and the discovery of who I was started to grow. I went to college and I danced on a team where I was one of four black girls and the only one that actually grew up in a community where black students were the majority because there is a difference. And I wore weaves because it was convenient, because I was performing and competing and practicing. And then I reached another state of awareness where I just stopped pretending that the racially biased comments that the people in my environment would say and use and the politics that came with being a minority amongst people that didn't look like me was just no longer tolerable. It made them really uncomfortable, but because I had already existed in so much discomfort for the years that I was there, and I just didn't understand why my experience with them wasn't teaching them a lesson of like certain things not being okay. Like they just got too comfortable and it pissed me off. So of course i was the most hated and i think i'd rather that and people kind of tighten up around me because they know i don't play that shit than um just kind of kiki and ha ha at every little dumbass comment that they would say like i was literally in a war zone every day damn near when i was at my first college but to move forward i reached that state of awareness and I was like, wow, these people don't like me no matter what. And it's deep. And I know this is going to go over some people's heads and be an unpopular opinion, but like, hear this. It doesn't matter if they have a cousin 
with a black friend, a mixed race person in their family, their favorite celebrity looks like you, their maid was some immigrant from a melanin dominated country and they've spent their entire life raising them under some indentured servitude in, in their household for however many years, like none of that matters. The amount of laws put against our survival and the lengths that our government took to tell other nations why they should fear us is enough evidence that they only tolerate us and they can only really pretend to do that when they are seeing us hate ourselves or trying to be and act like them anything else is just an open door to some psychological war that i went to when i was in college where they will do the best that they can to get you out or manipulate everyone around you into changing how others perceive you and then celebrate after as if it's what they are justified to do once you're gone it's generationally how they have operated for thousands of years and it sounds too raw to be true but that doesn't negate the fact that it is true and anyone with an argument to that statement i'll save you the time by saying i am not about to argue with you over my life experience and i'm not about to argue with you over something that you know is true and it's funny because their own racial bias would rather argue my validity than do the work within their own generational healing and their community that would ask the question why that level of hatred was normal in the first place. Because then they would have to answer why they find nothing wrong with it. Because taking the route to pointing the finger and gaslighting someone else is much easier than doing the work. But I'm not surprised because their ancestors didn't even pay for their own labor. How can I expect them to know what it means to actually do work to make change? I think this portion is called The Sprout because it's a redemption story. You know, throughout all of the darkness and the dangers and the imperfect circumstances, we just kind of rise anyway, you know? So I left one school and I went to another and I told myself that at this next school I wanted to strip away everything and just grow and exist as me. I didn't know anyone and I didn't want to. I think discovering myself and showing up as me and discovering what that means was more important at the time. So I wore my natural hair. I wanted to see what it would be like if I allowed myself to grow if I actually took the time to nurture the parts of myself that I wanted to hide. And I don't think my boyfriend at the time found me attractive anymore, which was unfortunate because up until I started, you know, wearing my natural hair, he just started acting funny, kind of shunt, tried to like make me feel othered even in our relationship because I wasn't wearing all of the styles that he met me in. And yeah, of course he cheated. And because I was so fragile in that state of me, there was so much that I was going to Ment mentally, physically, my appearance was changing. I was trying to find this love for myself. So I was still very young and this of course hurt me. And I honestly started to blame myself on his inability to be loyal to me and the version that I was becoming. And that was such a waste of my time and energy because of course it wasn't true. If a person decides to leave or stay, it has absolutely nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And I shouldn't stand in the way of that. Nor should I think I can do something that could change a person's mind about what they feel about me. You know, that's absolutely ridiculous but when you're outside of your own power those thoughts of lack start to creep up and you start to feel like you're just pulling for anything at this point and that's what I did I mean of course I'm better off now but you know it's like you have to kind of go through those things I think this part of my life like this blossoming in my life is a time that feels like this 
slow emerging this slow unraveling of who i am and who i'm truly meant to be and when i say slow i mean slow like really juicy and i'm really allowing myself to take my time and for the first time in a very long time i'm not feeling any type of way about the pace and my birthday is going to be september 17th and i will be turning 29 years old and I was telling my partner that this age feels like an ending of old cycles and I'm just looking forward to my 30s a lot. And I'm actually optimistic about the many experiences that I will be able to have. And along with the things that I've already learned along the way, I'm interested, I'm interested to see how I will like navigate through new challenges with the experiences that I've already had under my belt. And now that I'm much older and far from the girl I was, I have the leverage to say that those insecurities that I had when I was younger, you know, they kind of never go away. You just overcome. You just kind of stand firm in who you are and have this grounded and like inner acceptance in who you are it's like like a flower that's in the sun you know every day is not going to rain no matter how much the flower needs it but hopefully the roots sit in the soil dark and deep and moist enough to nourish itself on days where the water is scarce every day i won't feel like my best and most capable self but my experience and everything that i have overcome just to be okay with me is enough proof that things will get better that i am and that we are wonderfully made and i think this conversation is so important to have as a creator because i felt It was hard for me to show up consistently when I was comparing my appearance, myself, my journey. Because I am who I am, things are going to get, I'm going to have to get things, you know, the harder way. Or because I am who I am, it's going to take me a lot longer to to, to get the things that I want. And yeah, if, if that is true, so what? So what? Actually, like holding my journey sacred and not really caring about the pace is really all that matters and it starts with like a deep love and grace for myself to give myself permission to take time you know these things will take time you know yeah what's so great about youtube is that you don't have to be this perfect person to build a platform you just have to be authentic and i didn't want to hold myself back anymore so to the black girl or boy who hides herself or hides himself i just want you to know that the sun rises and falls for you to delight in all that god has created on this earth you set the trends you make the things happen because you are the culture We will always see the future verse. That realization alone is enough to inspire me to push forward and create. But what inspires you to kind of push forward? I know what makes me happy in giddy, just the thought of like being in our culture and being on social media. When we see something, everybody kind of sees it and we will laugh about it for like a week and a couple of days and it's something so small but it's something i cherish because i genuinely enjoy laughter and i don't know it's just something that i've always took pride in as a black woman and i think it's kind of something that brings us together that's really really special um yeah another thing that i want to ask is when was a turning point in your life where you stopped hiding yourself if that was who you were before? And if you aren't quite there yet, what is the thing that's holding you back from fully presenting yourself to be this creator that you want to be? I think I want my platform to kind of be like the support system for people that are trying to be a better version of themselves or like being the creator that they want to be. Like, it's 
trial and error, but you actually have to try to get one step closer to that version of yourself that you're trying to be. And um, it's really all about the journey, and the journey doesn't start if you don't begin. So I hope this inspires you to make your own video and just throw yourself into the abyss and know that you don't have to be this perfect thing to, to show up here and who you are is absolutely enough. Matter of fact, we are looking forward to the days that you show up consistently because you're giving the culture something else to delight in and enjoy. I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing my story and some parts of me aren't perfect and I think I can appreciate those parts of me more instead of trying to tell this perfect story that make me seem invincible. Um, yeah, I hope that anything that I said resonated with you. If you have any questions or if you would like to share anything about yourself, please do it in the comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next video.